Almighty God, graciously behold this your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and delivered into the hands of sinful men to suffer death upon the cross. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading from the 52nd and 53rd chapters of Isaiah. Behold, my servant shall act wisely. He shall be high and lifted up and shall be exalted. As many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of the children of mankind. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told them they see, and that which they had not heard they understand. Who has believed what they heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his stripes we are healed. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Merciful and everlasting God. You did not spare your only Son, but delivered him up for us all to bear our sins on the cross. Grant that our hearts may be so fixed with steadfast faith in him that we fear not the power of sin, death, and the devil. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 19th chapter. Jesus went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but rather, This man said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit.
Christ, you Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. O Christ, you Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. O Christ, you Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. Amen. From the Gospel reading appointed for this Good Friday, the following words. Later, knowing that all was now completed and so that Scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of white vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. There are no words to adequately appropriately express the depth of the event described by John. There is no mental capacity that comes even close to understanding the power of the love of God that is manifested through a hateful instrument of death called the cross that the Romans used to put away the undesired of their society. God's only begotten Son's body hangs lifeless on the cross. Think about that. The Creator Himself, His Son on the cross, dead. Because he was with God at the beginning when all things were made. He is creator too. And yet he subjected himself to the lowest of the low. Namely, you and me. Who were created in the image of God. And yet we rejected that privilege the redemption of the world had been completed. In one word, tetelestai, it is finished. Jesus sensed that his death was near, and so that was the last word before he died that he spoke. It is finished. Finally, the redemption of the world is a accomplished fact. It cannot be changed. It is factual and historic. And there were plenty of witnesses to see it all. It is finished. The redemption which first was mentioned in the Garden of Eden while God was reprimanding the serpent, he said that the descendant of the woman, the only begotten Son of God, born of Mary, would crush the serpent's head. And immediately after the fall, God brought light and hope to their darkened hearts. No need for despair, Adam and Eve. But you will be given a reminder that you disobeyed me. Out you go. And at the gate of paradise, of the Garden of Eden, a terrifying scene takes place. Cherubim on each side of the gate guarding the gate, and a mighty sword, a flaming sword, 
flashing back and forth. This promise of the Savior and this premise, this concept of salvation was repeated often. It was repeated all the time. For the first significant time, it was repeated with Noah. The vow to save mankind even if it was at the cost of the destruction of all who had rejected, continuously rejected God. So all were put to death except the eight on the ark. This one was repeated again to Israel throughout their 40 years in the desert, where every time they would strike camp, and take apart the tabernacle and move to a different site and erect the tabernacle again, that was a reaffirmation of God's love and his plan to save them all. And in the Holy Land, it was like a broken record. Every single one of the prophets wrote about the covenant that had to be renewed every day in the hearts of people. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Micah, Nahum, Zephaniah, Habakkuk, and Malachi repeatedly reaffirmed the promise of the Savior. God's people were told of the redemption by the evangelists throughout the three years of Jesus' ministry in which every day he would say, Behold, the kingdom of heaven is near. Today, in your hearing, this promise has been fulfilled when he read about the servant of God in the book of Isaiah on a certain day in the synagogue. He taught that the kingdom of heaven was at hand. The time has come, he would say. Prepare, he would say. And so now it was finished. On this day we honor Jesus. We do not observe his funeral, for he lives but we remember that his death was caused by our own faults. Not only that we committed in the form of Adam and Eve for all generations that succeeded them until ours, but for every sin that we commit today, he died. So that every sin we commit today can and will be forgiven. Present your repentant heart to God in sorrow at the death of his only begotten Son, and your sin will be forgiven. That is the effect of Christ crucified in our place. So we do not keep this news of his death for our sins to ourselves. It is finished, the work of redemption. But let the work of proclamation begin where Jesus' work of redemption ended. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand for the litany. O Lord, O Christ, O Lord, O Christ, God the Father in heaven, God the Son, Redeemer of the world, God the Holy Spirit, be gracious to us, 
be gracious to us. From all sin, from all error, from all evil, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, from sudden and evil death, from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and rebellion, from lightning and tempest, from all calamity by fire and water, and from everlasting death, by the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, in all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment, we poor sinners implore you to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. to raise those who fall, and to strengthen those who stand, and to comfort and help the weak-hearted and the distressed, to give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, to, te to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage, and to have mercy on us all, to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, and graciously to hear our prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, O Christ, O Lord, O Christ, O Lord, have mercy. Amen. our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, do not deal with us according to our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you desire not the death of a sinner, but rather that we turn from our evil ways and live graciously spare us those punishments 
which we by our sins have deserved, and grant us always to serve you in holiness and pureness of living. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you.